there are people like this in the world. Our first assumption, right? And not saying that sometimes this is not true, because sometimes it is, but the first assumption is, what are you hiding, <laughs> right? You gotta be hiding something, right? That you don't want me to see your paychecks and know how much money you have, you know? It's like, what are you hiding? Do you have another family that you're paying for somewhere? Hello, Scorpio Cross Watcher. <laughs> Welcome to the Across Watchers Only reading. If you are not familiar with what this reading is, and mind you, I'm still trying to work out this intro because I haven't done these in so long. This is a reading that I do not for Scorpio people, but for a person who is dating in a relationship, situationship, or anything of the sort with a Scorpio person, and you're coming here to get some clarity and insight in reference to your whole connection with a Scorpio person. So unless you're a Scorpio who's dating a Scorpio, you shouldn't be here. Just saying. Anywho, but the first card we have um, popping out is the Five of Wands. That is my Petty LaBelle card. That is followed by the Moon card, which is Cancerian Energy. I legit need to close this group text because that's going to distract me. But anywho, so we have the Petty LaBelle card, which is followed by the Moon card, which is Cancerian energy. And we're pulling on um, your energy, my cross watcher friend. So what it is looking like is in reference to your Scorpio person, there's a sense of distance between the two of you, but there's also um, a bit of an inner conflict going on within you because... <laughs> It's almost, do I want to say a fear? It's almost a fear as if your person is seeing someone else, you know? And it's not really sure if that's actually happening or not. So I feel it's almost like you're trying to keep an eye on them or, or check up on them. Or if, you know, they said that they were going to call you back in an hour, it's been a little bit too long it's more or less wanting to see what they're doing and where they're at because it feels almost like something inside of you is telling you something is amiss or that something is going on and you're not really sure what it is that's actually happening. Um, it feels, this feels strange y'all. It's almost like a crazy making kind of vibe. It's like, there's nothing in 3D that's happening, right? that would give you this inclination, but it's feeling that way, if that makes sense. I hope that that makes sense because trying to put that into words is a little complex for me. It's like, there's nothing going on, but you feel deep inside of yourself. And I'm not saying that there isn't anything going on, but like, there's nothing going on in the physical world, right? Like. There's nothing that they're overtly doing, but it's just a feeling that you have, right? So the next card that we have is the seven of wands in the reverse. So still it's speaking to this sense of um, like being taken advantage of or your, your kindness being taken for, um, for weakness, that your person isn't being truthful with you about their feelings or about what it is that's going on and this sounds so weird how it's coming out dude because it it it's almost like i'm picking up on the energy of the fogginess where it's like it and that's why i say it's like crazy making and even in the term for crazy making would be like gaslighting and not saying that this person is actually gaslighting you but the like the energy I'm picking up on, it feels like being gaslit because it's like looking at the sky and knowing that it's blue, but being told that it's not and trying to make sense of that because it's like, it's blue and everyone's like, it's green. And it's, it's trying to make sense of that. So it's like the confusion or the brain break a person would go through trying to make sense of like, how am I seeing this as blue? And everyone is saying it's green, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But whatever the case, it would fall into this realm of when you think of like women's intuition, you know what I'm saying? It feels like that's what you guys are picking up on. It's like a feeling like that, 
but it's almost like wanting to doubt yourself because there's there's no proof of what it is that you feel is going on. Now, what I will say with this is I'm not sure as of yet, because we haven't pulled the cards for your Scorpio person, if this is something that's actually going on, right? You know what I'm saying? And I would never say deny your intuition, but if it's something that uh, is actually going on um, or if it's not, however, what I can say is knowing a lot of Scorpios in my life is this is a vibe a lot of people will get from Scorpio people just because Scorpio people move in silence a lot, you know, and they don't necessarily feel the need to tell you every minute detail of their day. And the thing I'm not sure of yet is if this feeling is coming from a place of like past experience with this person or past relationships you know what I'm saying? Or if this is actually um, your intuition. And the reason why I say that is because of um, this moon card coming out. Because with this moon card, this could be like a subconscious projection. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just throwing that out there because, you know, we're not finished picking cards, so we don't know for sure. So anywho, let's get into the energy of your Scorpio person. And, oh, hell. Okay. All right, so we have the four of swads in the reverse. So they're not really keeping anything from you per se. There's not anything that, um, how can I say this? It's not anything that they're hiding, right? Because if it was upright, I would say, yeah, there, there is a truth that's going on here <laughs> that they're not sharing. But um, with this four of swords in the reverse, no, there, there really isn't anything that they're holding back from you. Like, it's not like something that they know that you don't and they're not telling you what you don't know. You know what I'm saying? So that's not really so much uh, an issue there. But at the same time, with this four of swords in the reverse, I can see um, elements of uh, what was it that I said with the Libra cross watchers reading. It was a phrase that came up um, on a need to know basis type of deal. The next card that we have is the wheel of fortune in the reverse. And this is really a bad habit here. So here's the dealio. If I were to say uh, this perspective with your Scorpio person, it's more or less we have the two of wands and then we have the high priestess. This is funny. Okay, here's the deal. All right. So much like how I said, with this vibe, a lot of people will pick up uh, from a Scorpio person, um, which is them kind of moving in silence and not necessarily feeling like they need to tell you every single minute detail. So an example of this would be if they got off from work, you know, stopped at you know jersey mike's <laughs> you know got a sub ate the sub in the parking lot then decided hey you know let me go to tj max you know what i'm saying and just kind of meandered around there stopped at barnes and nobles got back in their car and went home and you know the person didn't call you at the time that they typically would call you right so you call them or they call you and it's like, you know, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, you know, heading home from work, right? Not ever mentioning that they stopped at Jersey Mike's or, you know, uh, they went to TJ Maxx and it's like, you're heading home from work. It's like, well, it's 8.30. It's like, did you work late? And it's like, nah, you know? And it's like never really saying what they did, but they literally got a sub from Jersey Mike's and meandered around <laughs> TJ Maxx. So, and they never give you an explanation for that. And it's like the person who's asking, like the cross watcher is asking them this and you're asking, thinking that they're gonna say that they got a sub and went to TJ Maxx, but they just don't. They're just like, no, nah, I didn't work late. You know, and it's like, so you didn't and it's like okay so these are hours that passed and you're just heading home it's like are you gonna say something you know so that's kind of the vibe that I'm picking up on with this cross watcher is with this four of swords in the reverse right 
for them to say, you know, that, you know, they went to the gym, right? <laughs> and they really didn't. And they really went to get a sub and went to TJ Maxx. That would be considered a lie. To say, you know, I worked late and they really didn't, that would be like four of swords upright. So this is a truth that they have, right? That they're in possession of, that they're not sharing with you. But this is one of those things where it's not, um, you know, uh, what is that? Is that called lying by omission or something like that? I don't know if that's the proper term for this, but it's not that they're lying. It's not that they're not telling you the truth. It's they're just not giving specifics but I feel the lack thereof of those specifics not being given, like not saying like, oh, you're just heading home. Did you work late? Nah, I stopped at Jersey Mike's and then I meandered around TJ Maxx for a while, right? Is typically what a person would expect. But with me working with a lot of Scorpios, me knowing a lot of Scorpios, that's just a part of their personality. It's like, they're not gonna give those minute details. It's just, nah, I didn't work late, you know? But I can understand how that would bring a sense of suspicion if in one's past experience, they've been through something like that before. So I think that that's something that the cross watcher would wanna be cognizant of. However, with this wheel of fortune and the reverse being here, this says to me that with the Scorpio person, this is an issue that they've run into in past relationships, right? They've run, so this is something that is a part of their awareness. It's kind of like, um, with it being an inherent trait, right? And this is getting into like kind of personal development type of stuff, but with this being an inherent trait of your personality, right? This is who you are. No one is required to change who they are. However, if in connections with other people, you realize that an inherent personality trait of yours, right? Causes a sense of conflict or unrest in relationships. That's one of those things where we learn to compromise, right? So if the Scorpio person is in a relationship with people in the past, which is what I'm seeing with this Wheel of Fortune in the reverse, and them doing this, like doing that whole, you know, no, I didn't work late. And you're just like, so why is it 8.30 and you're like <laughs> on your way home type of deal, right? Like, what were you doing in that time span without me sounding extremely obsessive about what you're doing, right? It's them having that issue in the past and that upsetting people. And of course, it's their prerogative. They have the right to say like, I don't owe you anything. Like, I don't have to give you like an itinerary of what I did, right? But if being in a connection with people in the past, this has caused conflict or made the person feel insecure, there could be a decision that could be made by the Scorpio person to say like, hmm, this is legit a thing that all of my exes got upset about. I care about this person, even though I don't necessarily feel that I have to give an explanation. If this would make my partner feel more comfortable, right? I'll just start saying, yeah, I went to Jersey Mike's and then went to TJ Maxx. But that's more of something that the two of you would have to work out in your particular um connection right so there is a level of self-awareness of them knowing that they do this but i feel cross watcher it's almost like this is triggering for the cross watcher and that's like i said with this moon card being here it's reminding you of situations that you've been in before you know what i'm saying where a person has been dishonest so that's where that vibe comes in of feeling like could this could they be seeing someone else or whatever maybe they're dealing with someone else maybe they have you know a hidden life they're not telling me the whole truth whatever the case how this would be solved is as opposed to going into like private eye mode <laughs> right and trying to figure out what's going on with them and what they're really doing something as simple as a conversation of bringing this to their attention of saying hey when you do X, Y, Z, it makes me feel this using, you know, your I feel statements, you know, and letting them know where it is that you're coming from and what this does for you. Um, I wouldn't necessarily suggest like if this is kind of one of those things where you feel this way because every single person in your past 
and this is hypothetically, but if every single person in your past cheated on you and that's why you feel that way, that would not be the Scorpio person's responsibility because that would be something, and y'all know I always tell people, child, holla at a therapist, work through that. You know, we got the link to better help in the description box, I'm just saying. But anywho, you know, if this is something from past disappointments, that's something that the, the cross watcher is responsible for working through yourself. That is not Scorpio's responsibility to help you heal from past wounds, right? or for them to kind of bend over backwards to try to prove to you that they're not doing what you're assuming they're doing because their behavior looks similar to a past person. You know what I'm saying? Because what I'm seeing with this is it is a, a habit that they have. This is something that has happened with them before, which is why I feel this conversation with them being honest about how you're feeling would help because I feel having this conversation is going to trigger something in their mind where they're going to be like, damn, like all my exes did say that. I do be doing that. You know what I'm saying? And with this two of wands, it's the two of you working together. And I really feel overall, that's their desire. It's like this person's desire is to move forward with you to plan a future with you. But I feel with the high priestess <laughs> being next to that, they may not have even told you that either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the fact that they have a desire to move forward, because like I said, dude, it's like, I know so many Scorpios and this is legit the vibe. It's like, uh, what is it that Lil Wayne said? Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Like that is every Scorpio I have ever known <laughs> my entire life. It's like, they literally don't feel like it's they're just very independent they don't feel the need to to check in with people or to tell people what it is that they're doing like a scorpio could be planning like you know a whole surprise engagement wedding type of deal you know what i'm saying and just be very straight faced and you never have any idea that any of that is going on you know what i'm saying because that's just their temperament but once again, this is something that they're aware of. So I feel what needs to happen here is communication. And in the event that this is an insecurity that's coming up because of what the cross watcher has gone through in the past, that's your responsibility to heal that within yourself. You know what I'm saying? But overall, with this two of wands, I see this in two ways, kind of uh, pairing it with these cards prior to it. This says to me that if there's a conversation that is had, because there isn't gonna be any movement forward between the two of you, and it's gonna be this weird two ships passing in the night type of deal going on. If the truth of how you're feeling isn't revealed, but the forewarning is, is to take personal accountability if this is coming from a place of what has happened to you past tense, and you get you a little therapist, work through that. You know what I'm saying? But then on the other side, looking at this going forward into this high priestess card, it says to me that the conversation would go well. It would be the two of you working together on how to move forward from here. You know what I'm saying? To build more stability, security, and trust within the partnership but also needing to truly understand the temperament of your person. And that's also Pisces energy, by the way, with this high priestess, but also in fixed sign energy with this wheel of fortune, which is Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Leo. Uh, but anywho, but it's needing to understand the temperament of um, your person, you know, because I feel as far as, like I said, what came up in the uh, Leo, I mean, the Libra cross watchers only reading, um, it was a different dynamic, but it was this feeling that the Libra person had that they were dealing with a person on a need to know basis. There's some people who are literally just like that. It's like, if, if it's something that I feel you need to know, I will tell you, right? So there's some people who are just like that. Do we say if that's right or wrong or how someone should ought or supposed to be? We really can't say. When it comes to partner selection, it really goes by what works for you because there's some people who are like this 
that don't have a desire to compromise, and I would say they don't have to, it's just about the people that we choose to be in relationships with. We need to make sure that we're compatible with a person. You know what I'm saying? So if a person feels, you know, um, and this is a really good thing that just popped up in my head. <laughs> Say hypothetically, you're in a relationship with someone and like y'all live together, right? But it's finding out that this person is on a need to know basis with finances. So even though you live together, right, this person will not ever let you see their paycheck stubs, right? They don't want you to know how much they make. And they want the two of you to have two separate bank accounts and y'all split bills, even though you're in a relationship, sleeping in the same bed together, right? There are people like this in the world. Our first assumption, right? And not saying that sometimes this is not true, because sometimes it is, but the first assumption is, what are you hiding, <laughs> right? You got to be hiding something, right? That you don't want me to see your paychecks and know how much money you have, you know? It's like, what are you hiding? Do you have another family that you're paying for somewhere? You know, that's the instant thought. Now, in reality, there are some people who don't want you to see all of that stuff because they are hiding something, but there's also people who just feel is on a need to know basis. You don't need to know how much money I make because that's just the way that they are. Now, if you're a person to where you would want a partner to be transparent with their finances, that's something you would want to be cognizant and aware of when it comes to the partner that you select. You would not want to get all the way to the point to where you live in with somebody and then find this out. This would be something you would want to find out in you know, a dating type of style. You know what I'm saying? And if that doesn't jive with you, you wouldn't be cool with a person who feels, you know, is on a need to know type of basis, then that may not be an ideal match for you partner wise, right? Because our thought is a lot of times when a person is like this or in a myriad of different ways or feels like they don't need to give you minute details of their day, each of us as individual human beings have a right to be the way that we are. However, there's certain ways of being that aren't necessarily conducive to a relationship, <laughs> right? Unless the two people in that relationship are on the same page with that type of stuff and it doesn't bother them. But a lot of times we feel we like a person needs to change because it's like that's suspicious that you don't want me to know how much you make. And I feel I should know that. And because I feel that that means you need to think like me. So you need to make changes to be like me. You know what I'm saying? And this is more or less me giving this other perspective of just because we value something does not make us right. It just makes us, that's your value. This person values differently. Now the question is not about, you know, people having to bend or mold or be what the other person wants. It's about electing to be with someone who is um, complementary to the way that you are, as opposed to expecting someone to change to the way that you are because you like I said it could be a little sus but that's just the way people are sometimes so that's my little TED talk you know what I'm saying so here's the interesting thing my wonderful <laughs> cross watcher of a Scorpio friend this is a deck I used this only one time <laughs> on my channel prior to this right and it's like I saw this deck and I just thought it was hilarious and I bought it so it's like one of these old school, like, uh, like uh, fortune teller kind of decks, right? Like there's a dude, you know, with like a crystal ball and a little hat on, on the cover or whatever. And literally before I started your reading, I had turned, you know, to, to do it. And like the box caught my eye and I, I just felt like you need to use that for that reading. And I was like, oh, this is going to be funny because I've never... <laughs> I've never used it like to wrap up a reading before. So I feel like this is going to be funny. Um, but what it does is you can ask a yes or no question, right? Whatever it is. And it's going to give you an actual like uh, message aside from the answer to your yes or no question. So formulate, this reminds me of the Dice of Resonance, y'all. I'm so about to bring the Dice of Resonance back. Like I miss the Dice of Resonance. I lost them when I moved. And I miss them greatly. But anywho, this reminds me of that. But think of, um, ask a question that's a yes or no question, and I'll give you the answer to that. 
And I'm also going to give you guys a message um, <laughs> from these cards because this is just, this is funny. Let me see the directions. Let me see. Okay, I got to make three piles. Three. And okay, draw the first card from the first deck. draw the second card oh wait draw the second card of the first deck and place it face up horizontally across the first card okay uh draw the third card of the first deck vertically over the second card and read three sentences for, all right, here we go. That is so strange, ciao. Oh, wait, okay, so this is three different messages. Okay, so look at that. We'd have made us a pick a card right quick, ciao. So cross watcher, pick number one, number two, or number two. Three, this is so lit. Look, I don't know what made y'all so special <laughs> to do this, but hey, I'm here for it, my friend. So pick number one, number two, or number three. And we're gonna see how these little uh, fortune teller cards go. So let's see here. If you picked number one, go follow your first mind. You know, if you haven't picked yet, just go ahead and pause, and, you know. So if you picked number one, the message is, and also ask your yes or no question, my friend. Okay, so the message is a family grief, a change for the best. You will receive a check or paper money soon. Well, look at that. And the answer to your question is yes. Ain't that something? So if you picked number two, your message is a great future for you. Don't be disappointed. Do not let talk or jealous persons bother you. A change in the life of a true friend. And the answer to your question is yes. This is interesting. And then the last one, if you picked number three, your message is a long motor trip with a surprise at the end. Being true to a friend will injure your future oh good lord <laughs> be careful mm, child you worry over small matters and the answer to your question is yes look at that all them yeses this is fascinating y'all let me know what y'all think about that in the comments i think this is so lit like i want to do this for like everyone now but i think that would make all of the readings extremely long and they're already long so anywho cross watcher that has been your reading i'm going over to my network to do you guys extended in which we're going to look at how your scorpio person thinks as well as feels about you so if you're about that life follow me on over there but if not i still love your face and i'll see you guys sooner than later my friends